Pastor forever. Thank you, Pastor. Hey, Amen. The, the, the Lord, he's, uh, he's awesome. Yes. He's awesome in power. And without God, what would we be? You know what I mean? Probably be out there on the street still, trying to gangbang, dead, prison. Yeah. Uh, what they call deadbeat dads or something like that. That's what they say out there, right? Yeah, yeah that's what they call them, though. But God had a different, had a different plan. And, 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 you know, and I give him all the glory and all the praise. I'm going to be coming out of First Peter, chapter 3, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Please stand in reverence to the word of God. And amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Let's go. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Right. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, in whom, though now ye see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the, end, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You may be seated. Let us pray. O oh Lord God of heaven, the most high God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you continue to do in the lives of your people, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that this word that is here, Lord God, that it go forth and that it go forth as you want it to, Lord God. I set myself aside. You, Lord God, are the only thing that I love. I love you. I love you so much, and I thank you, God. And I thank you, Lord God, for all those men that are over me and all those men that you have pointed me to, to lead, Lord. God, it's only because of you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, it's it's an it's an amazing thing because I look at the current events that are going on around the nation and the world and stuff like that, and, and, and you know, people are still out there acting a the fool. They're acting crazy still. You know what I mean? And, and, and I started doing some research. Uh, well, I started looking. I like to look at the news, and I started looking at, at some news coming out of Russia and stuff like that. And how, how, how that, that President Putin started calling his people and started calling a, a nuclear, telling them to go to nuclear shelters running drills. You know what I, that, you know what I mean? And then today, I found out that, that, you know, that not only was he doing this, but he's also calling all his people back to his nation, all those that are outside of Russia. Well, we know that Jesus Christ said in his word that there's going to be wars and there's going to be rumors of wars. You know what I mean? So we know that this is prophecy already. There's, there's already something that God, we, we got the upper hand as far as prophecy goes. And, and one thing that the Lord wants us to know today is that he's already, he's already told us through his word that in the last days that, 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 that people are going to prophesy. And that, the, and that the young men, the old men are going to have dreams and the, and the young men are going to see visions. And, and these things, I don't know if y'all guys meditate on God's word, but God is trying to show us something today. That the end that, that, the end that we expect, it's promised. But it's only to us. The, me, the title of this message today is going to be called Proven Faith. Proven Faith, all right? And I thank God because... You know, I, I, I have to be obedient to how God's word goes forth. It was, it's amazing what God is doing in my life. I, don't do, I, I can't do anything. There's nothing that I can do to please my father. All, all, I, all I can do is just sit back and watch him move in my life. And there's some things that, that, man, daily on the daily, I try to pay attention to as many things as I see that God does and as he moves. I see a lot of my friends, and, and, and I don't know if they testify or if they're boasting about, about healings and miracles and things that are going on around them. Oh, I don't even know if they're lies. 
But you know, one thing that I noticed about it is that they're exalting themselves. And that's one thing that we as, as men and people and women of God have to be very careful with. You have to be very careful with that spirit of pride if it comes against you. See, because we have to be, we have to have that mind of Christ. And to have that mind of Christ is very powerful. You understand who Christ Jesus is. Yeah. Jesus Christ, man, I'm talking about, you're talking about healings and miracles. And, and, and man, I'm talking, he, he, he did a lot of things in, in, when he was alive and he walked on this earth. And he's alive today. But he did a lot of things when he came into flesh. And that he showed many people. And a lot of people, man, they're not taking heed to this word. They're not taking heed to this word. See, the enemy has found the breaches into the camps. He's already found the pre breaches into the churches. I don't know if y'all remember a while back, we were coming to the church during the revival, and there was a word going forth that we had to be on one accord. Uh, we had to be with one accord, and, and the word kept coming out of the pulpit. Oh, we got to be on one accord. We have to be with one accord. And all of a sudden, the things of the world started coming against us. And then that's what you look at and see, you see now, right now. What do you see out here right now? You only see a remnant. But that's all it takes for God to move. You only see a remnant. But that's all it takes for God to move. But you know what? One thing is that because the enemy already has sent out his, he's already, he's already has sent out his, his uh, what you call it, his task, or, or he's already sent out his plan. I know what I got to do. I know who I got to fool, and I know when I got to fool him. You see, but us as men, women and children of God, we have to remember who our father is. If you really want to take all this stuff in, if you really want to take it in, like you really want to take it in, go outside on one of those nights when it's real dark outside and look up to the sky and look at the moon. It's called the faithful witness. I'm not telling you to, to worship the moon, but look at it and just look at it and say, who put that there? And, and if your eyes allow you to look a little bit even further and, and, and look out into the, into the skies, you'll probably see a couple, you'll probably see Mars up there, maybe it's shining at its time of its season, or you'll probably see Jupiter shining at its time of its season, and maybe this will put this in perspective to you. But if you want to bring it to the ground that you walk on now, look at the lives that God has changed around the midst of the people around you. Look at, look at the hornmongers that we had in here. Look at the gangbangers that don't, didn't care about their spouses and those that didn't give Jesus praise. Let me, under, let me get you to understand one thing, and this is the main thing that you, you should know. You have been preordained from the beginning that you should be one of God's chosen. You have been preordained from the beginning, but it's up to you how you're going to take it. It's up to you how you're going to take it. Either you're going to say, I don't, want, I don't want to live like God wants me to live, or I'm going to live exactly how God tells me to live. And then you find out that if you start living exactly how Jesus Christ tells you to live, even though sometimes it get, does get, it, it gets pressing on us, don't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets pressing on us. Sometimes we wonder, man, where did this come from unexpectedly? Where did this come from? But do we know who our father is? And that's why I tell my wife, when you start feeling that uncomfortableness, when the enemy starts trying to bring this guilt and smash you down with it, you know what I learn? You know what I do? I turn everything off around me, and I pay attention to what God is trying to do in my life. Okay, Lord, why am I feeling this way? Up, uh, the Lord right away off the back. It's not of me. What are you doing? That's not of me. What are you doing? And you know what he tells me to do that I've learned? That when this stuff starts pressing me in my where I feel like in my, my chest is trying to get ripped apart, man, I pray and I start praising God. I just start praising God. Praise you, O Most High God. Hallelujah. Just at the top of my mouth and at the top of my lung until this thing just goes away. And I guarantee you that if you're praising the Most High God and if you're doing it in the name of Jesus, oh, they got to flee. Those things got to flee from you. Those things got to go from you. They got to run. They got to escape. Because, man, I tell you what, this promise that Jesus gave us, he said, I have given the authority to you. You have that authority. You have that authority. And there's nothing that none of us can boast about. And that's why I say when I see these men and they post, I'll say, oh, all these people got healed in my church. Oh, there's gold on my hand and all this. What is all this going on here? I don't talk about that. I'd rather be a no name in front of people because the testimonies that God gives me are mine. But the testimony that God gives somebody else are theirs. Then let them testify when God brings them out of that. But I give God all the glory and all the praise when he does move because there's some people in, in our midst right now that are among us that, man, it's surprising how God moved. I remember partying with Rigo back in the days. I remember we used to get all doped up in the backyard all the time when he used to come in town. And, but now look at this man sitting next to his wife, praising the most high God. I used to go to clubs with my brother Rob all the time, all the way buying bottles of Chirac and doing whatever else. But now look at this man with his family over there sitting, praising the Lord in the houses of God. And I'm pretty sure all of us had a testimony. All of us, we had, all of us had, a, a, had an experience in our life where we said, man, am I going to live this long or am I going to come out of it? Huh? Until we said, I want to trust in the Lord. On that day, I remember that day when I got saved and I said, I want to follow Jesus. 
And when I said I wanted to follow Jesus, I felt like all these jokes got broken off my back. And when those jokes got broken off my back, it was amazing because I heard the Lord speak to me clearly. I always hear bishops say, the Lord spoke to me clearly, and I know it was him. And I understood. I said, you know, that day when I did that, I understood that it was, Christ, that it was the Lord was speaking to me. He said, when I broke those jokes, I said, I don't want to be a drug dealer anymore. He goes, this is who you are. This is who you're meant to be. I'm supposed to be his servant. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be under him. He's supposed to be my, my boss. Huh? That's what we call it. That's what, the, that's what the world out there call it, right? And this is an inheritance that we've got from God. This is an inheritance. You know, a lot of us probably think, hey, as we go on in life and we say, oh, man, maybe somebody that I don't know is going to die. And then in a bank somewhere, there's going to be like a million dollars or something in the bank stored away. You know what I'm saying? And, and sometimes we keep that hope in our heart. That never crossed your mind, anybody in here? You never know. Like, oh, sometimes we go and look at that. Yeah, sometimes we go look at that U.S. Treasury thing and say, oh, maybe my name's on here. And there's a couple of thousand for me. And then when we see like 30 or 40 bucks, us, because we're Christians, we still rejoice because 30 or 40 bucks comes in handy. It comes in handy. Hey, we can put gas and buy some tacos for the kids because they eat a lot. You know what I'm saying? But that's an inheritance that's incorruptible. You can't change that. That's an inheritance. If you're walking with Christ Jesus and if you've been sprinkled with his blood and if you say, you know what, Jesus Christ is my God and God the more, is my, is my, is Jesus Christ is my God and, Jesus, and his father is my, is my father. Excuse me. I know what I'm saying here. The son of God is my brother, and the most high God is my father. But I give the Lord all the praise and honor and the glory. Yeah, get thee behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Get on out of here. Uncorruptible and undefiled, and that fade is not away, reserved in heaven for you. You got a reservation spot. You don't got to call nobody and go through no, no or Yelp, or you don't got to go to Google and put a reservation. Let me go ahead and put a reservation right here. Let me get a, let me get a mansion reserved right here. No, you, your mansion is already reserved, bro. Huh? Now, I don't know if you got a two or three car garage, but you might have some Lamborghinis in there. But I'll tell you what, the most thing you might have, you're probably going to have a gold chariot, a gold chariot of fire parked inside the driveway. Huh? And it's going to be salvation. And that, oh, man, I'll tell you what, man, the most, man, imagine when you just walk in there and you just see all this glory and all this praise. Man, you just see all this glory, man. Ooh, boy. You ain't going to be able to do nothing else but praise. Y'all ever have some of those days where you just want to praise God? Huh? You just wake up out of bed, all of a sudden he just fills it, fills you up in your spirit and inside your chest, and you're like, oh, Lord, hallelujah, I praise you. Even sometimes I freak out because sometimes I, I wake up in a bad mood. Oh, man, you know, but it does, it, the Lord says, uh, you ain't waking up like that today. I need for you to talk to some people for me. I, I walk out the door, and next thing you know, man, I just feel this joy. Like, man, all right, Lord, praise God. I'm praising God by myself. Huh? And, and that's even when I was going through troubles and trials and tribulations or whatever it was. Even when I was being proved. Huh? A lot of us are being proved right now. We're being proved. But I'll tell you what. If we understand who is proving us, you'll win the victory. You'll have the victory. Yes, now, if you say, okay, I'm being proved by the enemy and you keep giving the enemy praise, he's going to keep coming at you. But if you understand that you're being proved because you're being refined, that you're being made into something that is glory, man, you're being made into something that inheritance, that's incorruptible according to the will of God, man, then you should rejoice. Then you should rejoice. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because you have a reservation already set for you, man. You don't got to say, oh, I want a three-bedroom or whatever. You have a reservation reserved in the heavens for you. Man, that is beautiful just to think about that, man. I got a reserved spot. Man, I just got to keep walking with the Lord, be obedient, and I say, I'm not going to stray to the left or to the right because somebody showed me a little bit more leg than they're supposed to. Oh, I got, man, I'm sorry, honey, I'm going to be home late tonight. Whoa, watch out with that stuff. Huh? I want to keep my reservation. I want, I want to make sure I got it reserved and it's set. Amen. Man, I don't want to lose my testimony in what the Lord has done for me. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We're ready. It's going to be revealed. If your actions are that you don't love, that, that you want to be playing hide and go seek with the Lord, Ah, he, he, you know, the, the bad part about it is that he's on the seeking side. You, you on the hiding side. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the bad part of it is that you on, you on the seek, he's on the seeking side. He's on the hiding side. So, hey, you, you already got the game lost, man. You can't play hide and go seek with the Lord. Ain't no way you can do that because, because God's going to reveal all those things. You're going to say the word of God says that all, 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 everybody's going to kneel down in the front of the judgment seat of Christ, and you're going to have to give an account. Everything that you said, every word that you said, every slap that you did, everybody that you gunned down. But if you have Christ Jesus, he's going to be standing right next to you. He's going to be right there with the Lord. He's going to say, 
Oh man, I, I can't. This is mine right here. He, I, I sprinkled him with my blood. I got a, I got a mansion reserved for him. You know what I mean? But if you're walking with Christ Jesus and you still continue to do this trash, man, be careful because Jesus is gonna bring it up to him. That hide and go seek don't last that long. And with them. It don't last that long. He's going to say, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. That's what he's going to say exactly. But I tell you what, man, I, I give God the glory because, man, I ain't trying to go seek with the Lord, man. I want to seek his face early in the morning. I want to pursue after him. Ooh, like, like the like, man, like the deer patches after the water brook. I want some of that Jesus. I want some of that fresh water in my blood. Ooh, man, I, I know that's for sure, man. Sometimes me and my white boy, we, ooh, but you know what? I want some of that fresh water. I want some of that anointing on me because God is faithful man God is faithful he's good to us we just got to pay attention to what's going on don't let the enemy fool you or deceive you and lead you off track that's what he wants to do that's what he wants to do whom having not seen you love and whom though now you see him not yet believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory see it's like it's like when we go to the when we go inside the store and we see this big old tv oh man sometimes we jump on that thing right even though our checkbook we know ain't gonna balance out right though we still want the tv though right See, but this is even something more precious. I don't know if y'all understood a little bit further. We read about faith. That it'll be fine, refined like gold. What's important here right now is, is your faith. How much faith do you have in Christ Jesus? How much faith do you have in God that God can, can deliver you? How much faith do you have in him? Huh? Don't, when you buy a big old gold neck, I remember back, back in the days when I used to buy these big old gold chains and, and walk around with these gold teeth in my mouth. I don't know why. I had these... <laughs> I used to walk around with this grill. My wife looked at me like, man, she was so kind. She used to she wash them for me and before I went out and stuff like that. I used to scrub it with toothpaste and I used to put them in. But, hey, to me, that was kind of like, man, I'm trying to elevate myself. I want everybody to see me. See, that's, that's how you ought to be with your faith. You don't want everybody to see you, but this is something that we can't see, right? You want everybody to know that, hey, people, the, 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 your testimony and how you live your life, that's your goal. Refine finer than gold. That's your faith. Refine, fi man, refine finer than anything that the Lord can ever do for you in your life. If you just listen to him, pay attention to him. When, when Bishop talks to me and he tells me something, I weigh it. I weigh it. And that's the way all of us should be. If somebody around you that you know is walking in the going of God's word, if they tell you something and you say, okay, should I, should I move on faith in this or should I wait? I tell you what, all the times that I moved on faith today, and I said, I'm going to trust God. Guess what's happened? Man, God has opened doors for me like never before. And not only that, but he continued to speak to me. That's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. When he continues to speak to you because of your faith and because of your obedience, that you say, you know what, I'm going to continue to follow Christ. I'm going to continue. And, and, and God is just proving you through all this. And that's why I'm telling you, this is proven faith. He's proven you through this. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we don't like that stuff that comes against us. We don't like it. Man, all of a sudden, man, uh, just things are not going right at the job. All of a sudden, man, I, I, I was walking outside and, I, and somebody tried to throw a rock in my car. I don't know what it is. Somebody cut me off in traffic. You know, somebody slammed their brakes on me. Or somebody said something wrong to me out in the streets. You know what I mean? Or an old flame tried to contact me. Man, you got to be very careful with this stuff. And then once you start feeding on it, it your, which way your faith going to move, though? Are you going to put your faith in the things of this world, or are you going to put them on the things of above? Come on now. Come huh? On. That incorruptible seed. Oh, man. We are incorruptible. That's according to the word of God. If you, if you die and if you got Jesus, guess what? You, man, you in. And, and, if you ain't, and you ain't, if you ain't playing with this gospel, if you, if you over there walking around saying, oh, I, 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 man, I don't care. I can still walk with Jesus and I can still do things behind my wife's back or I can still do things behind my mother's back. Oh, man, I tell you what, if that sky cracks and Jesus comes back and, the, and he come, and he sends, he that's it. That's going to be over with. Huh? Just because we see these things going on in the world. If y'all look at Syria, Aleppo is getting ready to fall, man. I don't know if y'all understand this, but if there's a city in Syria that falls, hey, that's, that's prophecy. Pay attention to your Bible. There's a prophecy in there about a certain city. I forgot. I think it was Damascus. If Damascus falls, you see it in ruin. It's in the Bible that you be very careful. And that's why it's good to read your Bible. And, 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 and if you want to look it up, uh, I can't remember where to find it at, but it's in the Bible. Look it up. You'll see it. But you know what? This, this is according to your faith. See, all these things are happening because God is proving us right now. It's going to get worse. These, these, two, uh, these two people that are running for president, wow. Man, this is getting kind of crazy now. It's getting kind of crazy. Lies everywhere. Now you got everybody accusing everybody. But that's, that's the accuser of the brethren. That's what he wants to do. He wants to see chaos and confusion among people. You know what I'm saying? But God is trying to build a nation out of us. If you could just send an email to one of them and say, you know what, bring the nation back to God. Bring the nation back to God. 
Tell everybody bow down to God. Tell everybody to repent and follow the Lord, and, and the Lord will give you prosperity in all that you're doing. I started thinking about it. The Lord started showing me if this happened, there'd be war like back in the days. There'd be a lot of war, and this whole nation would be divided. But you know what? I'd rather be fighting for the Lord than anybody else, that's for sure. But I give him all the glory and all the praise because, man, I'm looking for that. I'm looking for that. Man, I'm looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus, man. On that day, I don't care right now. I mean, right now he's blessing us with what we got or he's doing what we're doing right now. But are we really putting our trust in the things of this world? Huh? Because the things of this world can easily be gone. The things of this world can easily be gone like that in a flash. I've seen it before. You know what I mean? And we think we got it made and all these good things are happening to us. And then one bad move that we make that we don't, we don't obey God, guess what happens? All right, let me start pulling a little bit of things from you. Let me start doing a little bit of that to you. Let me do a little bit of this to you. All of a sudden, you start getting proved. But are you ready? I mean, a lot of us are getting proved that we're failing the test. Why do you think a lot of people in here, oh, God ain't done nothing to me. I can still run the streets two or three months. But wait till about two more years from now. Wait till about two more years from now that you're supposed to be sitting right here in this church and they're not in here no more. After God done gave them their blessing. God blessed them. God gave you a husband. He gave you a wife. God gave you whatever he said he's going to bless you with by the, by the mouth of the prophet. Oh, you, I'm going to do this for you. Just be obedient to me. Have faith in me. I'm going to be obedient to you. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Savior. That's what I'm talking about. Be obedient to God, to the Most High God. Huh? And all of a sudden, man, people are, are they're getting their blessing and they're running. And they're gone. And then you don't see them in the house of God no more. And, 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 you know, and this is a terrible thing because God, all he wants to do is just wants to bless us. He wants to bless us, but also he wants us to make sure that we keep our calling. We keep that hope in our heart, that we keep the salvation in our soul. And a lot of people are not taking it for, for what it really is, man. Yes, sir. Rece receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. See, see, at the, man, when, when we push forward, we keep on getting proved. I, man, I don't know how many times y'all been proved the last two months. I've been proved so many times. It's, it's, it's man, it's just got all glory to God. But I give him the glory because I know that every time that I looked up, every time that I saw this other test, right, or this other proven ground, proven thing, proven faith right here in front of me, the Lord allowed me to pass it. He showed me how to pass it. All I did was I took time to read his word and to meditate. There's days, too, when I don't want to read my word. But if I don't, if I don't read my word, what if God's trying to show me something? What if he's trying to show you something? Huh? What if he's trying to, I mean, even if you don't, you know what, I don't want to pray tonight. But on that same night that you wake up with the tires on your, on your car are gone. You know what I'm saying? See, so when you feel that spirit of the Lord press on you and he tells you, you know what, get down there and pray. Man, do it. Because I tell you what, God is trying to, man, he's trying to help you and he's trying to save you from something. We're getting proved beyond measure and a lot of us are, fa we're failing what God is throwing at us. And then we have to start all over again. And then we have to walk all over again. Next thing you know, we'll find ourselves in a strip club with the women and we're supposed to be over here as, as an usher or doing whatever we have to do. You know, and that's a bad situation to be. And that's why I thank God for these men of God. They ain't compromising nothing up here. And that's why I'm glad that God has put me here. I mean, hey, man, for real, because it's hard to be a part of a, 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 of a group that you know that you're a part of and they're doing that. How you can, man, for real, how are you supposed to deal with something like that? Pray for one another. Keep each other in your prayers, man. I thank God for that because, wow, this is an amazing thing. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep going in 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter I'm going to go to 13. Wherefore, gird, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Man, all those thoughts, all those temptations that come against you, man, that, all these things that try to lead you off track, man, you, you, man take those thoughts captive. Yes. Take them captive. Yes. And, and, and you say, how do I do this? How do I take them captive? Man, the, 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 man, the answer is right here in God's word. If you remember, how did Jesus fight the enemy? He said, as it is written all the time. All the time he said it is written. He kept looking at God's word, and he knew God's word. And because he, 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 he kept growing up into knowing God's word. But, but are we even trying to fight the enemy with God's word, or are we just trying to do it on ourselves? Huh? Or are we trying to look at to see what, what the Kellogg's box says? Well, we're great. Huh? We're trying to be like Tony the Tiger, and we ain't trying to be like Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? For real, because a lot of us are getting, man, it, it shouldn't even be to the point where any of us are getting offended by anybody in this house. Yes. How we're, how we're going go to how we're gonna go to the Lord's house and be like, oh, I praise you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord Jesus. But this, but this vato right here, man, <laughs> he said something bad to me. How are we supposed to do that? Huh? Like, like I said, you're going to be walking around with a backpack full of feelings? Oh, watch out with them Come feelings. On, you got to watch out with them feelings. Yeah, yeah. You got to watch out with them feelings because them feelings right there, man, they, they'll put you in a bad spot. Yes, sir. You got to love one another. 
Don't be a stranger to one another. Hey, man, Jesus was called a strange thing back in the days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'll tell you what. One thing that we have to remember is that we have to love one another. We have to be at peace with one another. We have to make contact with one another. If you got all against your brother, go to him and ask him to forgive you. If you if, man, no matter what it is, I'll tell you what. As obedient children, not fashioning yourself according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he which has called you is holy, so you be holy in all manner of conversation. We have to be obedient children, man. Because we know that the lust of this world that we had when we used to walk in the road, those things were hardcore. You know what I'm saying? I remember when I was a game banger, and I'm and I led a lot of men, and these men were hardhead for real. They're were, they were a little bit more hardheaded than me, but you know what? They were hardhead. But one thing about them is that whenever I said something, they would do it, and that was crazy because you know now you know I talk to them now and I try to tell them, hey, let's follow Christ. They don't care what I gotta say. They don't care what I gotta say. I'm like, hey, bro, you know what? Let's go to the church and follow Christ and do this and that. They're look, man, they look at me like, man, what's wrong with this dude, man? But back in the days, I used to tell them, hey, go take care of this business for me. Oh, man, they were gone. It's because the enemy got them deceived. They need to know the truth. You know what I'm saying? They, man, they used to run the trouble. They used to love mischief. I, I was the same way. But, man, I thank God that he's changed my heart. He changed my life to see, to see, man, just to see in a different light, man. I remember, man, it's a different light. I remember when I started waking up, things start, when I would wake up and I was still in the world, things would look different to me. I saw a little haze in my vision. You know what I'm saying? Now that I wake up and I look and I see, man, I got a beautiful wife. My children sometimes act up, but still the Lord gave me, gave me wisdom how to handle them. I got a church where I can come worship, and, and there's people in this church that don't compromise and show you love. And I can pray for somebody, and God will hear me. And, man, and, or, or now he'll tell me, hold on a minute, Chuck. Let me take care of this a little bit later. You know what I mean? Because there's some things that I pray for, man, that, hey, God said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to hear you right now. Just give me a second. Uh, give me a minute, man. And a minute to him is like at least three years or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something like that. But you know what? I thank God for that. And that's why we, as men, women, and children of God, we got to remember to be holy, people. We got to remember to be holy. You're going to hear of all kinds of stuff getting ready to happen on this nation. You're going to hear about it. I remember when I was in the federal prison, and the Lord showed me this. When I was in federal prison, I was in my word. Uh, you know, it wasn't pretty sound doctrine, but I know that I was praying. That's the main thing. I was praying to God. But I was being taught by, by a, a, a what you call it, a, a theism. I forgot what they call it. Not atheist, but it's some other one. Anyway, theology. I was learning through theology. And, and when I was in federal prison, and I remember seeing President Clinton when he was president, and he had finished his term, and he was on TV. And President Clinton kept on saying through the end of his speech, I, I did this. I did this for this nation. I did that. I, he was exhausted himself behind the pulpit when he was getting ready to give up his power. And the Lord showed me right there on the spot. He said to me, this nation is in trouble because of that man. This nation is in trouble because of that man. And if you can look back to the time when President Clinton got off president of all that prosperity this nation had to where he exalted himself behind that pulpit. I don't care what president it was until there's repentance in this land and until there's obedience to God and then there's going to be a change. But when I saw that, the Lord showed me right there on the spot, there's going to be a change in this nation because of how he, because of what he said, the words of his mouth. That's the same thing in our lives, people. Yeah. Don't exalt yourself above, above the most high God. Yeah. Don't say, oh, I've done this and I've done that. And, and no, no, you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And you allow God to lift you up. You allow him to lift you up in his timing. And his, and his you know what, I'm ready, to, I'm ready to lift them up. I'm ready to bring them up. I'm ready to, man, I'm, he's bringing a lot of people. He lifted a lot of people up in this church. And if you look around, he's bringing up a lot of the faithful. And then a lot of the ones that get the blessing, mama knows. But they'll be back, though. You can't run from the Spirit of God. Like I said, you, you can't play hide and seek with him. You can be the hide part. He's going to be the seek part. He's going to seek. He's going he's gonna to come get you. Amen. Anyway, I, I thank God because I tell you what, he, um, he surely has blessed us, man, and everything that he's done. And I'm just trying to listen to see if the Lord wants me to give you anything else. But I tell you what, man, I thank God for his glory, for his praise, and I thank God for all of you. And that's, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.